lived here 42 years and we never seen bears or nothing there. We went to school in Dupuyer and we used to play down in the brush. About 10 years ago, they built a fence around the school to keep the bears out. They're enjoyable to see at a distance, not in your yard. When you put more people and more bears in the same location, some time we're gonna have more problems. I, I'm not against having bears in the world. I don't want them all to disappear, but everything's gotta be in balance. We're in north central Montana. This area is unique for its grizzly bears because this is way out on the prairie. The mountain areas around Glacier National Park and the Bob Marshall Wilderness, that's a, that area is essentially full of bears. And so it's at carrying capacity and so now new bears are being added to the ecosystem on the fringes, which is out here on the prairie. The bears have expanded out as kind of an unintended consequence of that protection. My parents bought a a uh, small ranch a mile and a half, two miles from the Glacier Park border. And to my knowledge, up until 20 years ago, I never ever saw a grizzly bear on that property. I don't ever see them going back the way they were when I was a kid, where they were just back in the mountains, because uh, my son was up there riding just west of there yesterday and saw three grizzlies. They're omnivores, so they like grain, they like alfalfa, they like carcasses, they like everything and there's lots of it. The, the bears really had learned a problem way back when. You know, in the middle of the night, we've heard the cows just go berserk up on the hill up here and didn't know what it was. And I'm sure a bear was passing through. Our ditch rider lives up at the mountain front. He's seen about 20 different bears this spring. That's a lot of bears. My mailbox is a mile away and a quarter of a mile from that, there's a bear den. One of the biggest reasons bears cause problems around people is because there's food. A part of having a cattle operation is you're gonna have some natural death loss of your animals, either from old age or sickness or pregnancies that didn't go right. There's always just gonna be death loss in a cattle herd. We're heading out right now to clean up a bone pit and that will help prevent bears from being drawn in close to people and livestock. These bone pits where people have been hauling carcasses for decades and decades, and it hasn't been a problem because there was no grizzly bears. Right. But now that the grizzly bears are expanding out, then it's becoming an issue because bears are being drawn near houses. The carcass removal program to me is just another tool in the toolbox. I have a pit over the hill here that I used to put my dead animals in, and we've seen bears in there quite a few times. Our carcasses that we hauled away, uh, they come and pick them up and take them to the landfill. Haven't had any bears in there this year at all. So we built this fence a year ago, and this specific fence is for keeping bears out of a carcass pile. So some carcass piles, there's just too much carcasses being added to them every day that we have a trouble keeping up with the demand. And so instead of having to haul those animals all the time, what we do is we just build a small electric fence to put those dead animals in. We use it for a lot of live animals, including honeybees. Um, so this is probably at least a couple thousand dollars worth of bees right here and we're protecting it with just a few hundred dollar electric fence. The Safari Club International Foundation has funded a lot of these materials. So this is the old door that was on there. It just became busted from regular use. And obviously the door's not very functional anymore. And even when it was functional, it wouldn't be able to keep a bear out if a bear wanted to get in. It's just really light aluminum where we've gone to the eighth inch steel, and so a bear won't be able to bust into that. So all these services that we provide, including the grain bin doors and the carcass pickup and these electric fences, we're providing for most of the time, no cost to the producer. And other times we do ask just for help with maintenance or help with uh, putting the fence up.
that would be heartbreaking if there was a wilderness area that had no grizzly bears in the future for my children. I would, I would be very disappointed and I would feel like we had failed in preserving these. However, I don't want the grizzly bears to go everywhere rampant and free to where my children can't go out and enjoy this without fear. There needs to be that balance. Grizzly bears are an amazing animal and they're really neat to see. And in that, we can continue to manage as a state these bear populations. Maria, we just really appreciate all the funding that Safari Club International Foundation has put into this program. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. You're really welcome. I really believe that, and, and you know, Safari Club International Foundation believes that if hunters or any other group want to have bears on the landscape, then we have to bear some of the responsibility for helping the people who have bears in their backyards. You know, it's, it kind of takes a number of efforts, a number of entities to work together to resolve these conflicts. Yeah, there's no doubt that folks out here are bearing a disproportionate share of the burden of having grizzly bears in the United States. We're happy we could help and we look forward to helping some more next year.